Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news. The channel's television news at 10, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting. This is the news at 10, a reminder of our major stories tonight. One soldier killed as militants attacked Nigerian army position in Bakasa, local government area of Cross River State. President Buhari seeks immediate release of $391 million pledged by the United States and the United Kingdom to immediately address the humanitarian crisis in the Lake Chad area. Countdown to the Edo State Governorship election, security agents in a show of force as state government declares Tuesday and Wednesday as public holidays. And continued bombardment by the Syrians of the Syrian city of Aleppo leaves nearly 2 million people without water. Do remember that all our top stories can be found on our website, channelstv.com and on youtube.com forward slash channelsweb. Do visit m.channelstv.com to view us live on your mobile device. You can also download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Besides the news and updates, the Channels TV app has an eyewitness feature. We encourage you to use it to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions. Here are pictures you sent in from all over the nation. Let's begin with this one from Ogun State showing a display of poor maintenance culture. Our eyewitness reporter sends this photo of water wastage from Abeokuta, the Ogun State capital. Next is this photo from Ifako Ijai area of Lagos State uh, showing this long vehicle standing across the road. Our eyewitness reporter says this vehicle disallowed other road users from using the road for a long time. Our next image is from Vandekia. It shows this road in deplorable state. Our eyewitness reporter says the road connects Benue and Cross River states and appeals to the federal government to fix it quickly. We have our next image from Suleja in Niger State. According to eyewitness reporter, the bad road is uh, bringing untold hardship and motorists and residents. Our final image is from Port Harcourt, the River State capital. This image of a flooded street, according to our eyewitness reporter, makes life unbearable for residents, especially when it rains. He wants the drainages improved on to check such incidents or worse occurrence. Well, thank you for those pictures and we ask that you keep them coming. Security agencies have again demonstrated their preparedness for the September 28 governorship election in Edo State following what they call Operation Root Walk, which is a march through some major streets in Benin City, the Edo State capital. The Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations, Mr. Olatunji Ayodele, said the continuous workout is to sound a note of warning to persons contemplating any form of electoral malpractice during the governorship election. The Edo State Command also announced the arrival of armored personnel carriers to be used during the polls. A convoy of security agencies in Edo State, the Army, Department of State Security Services, Civil Defense Corps, Immigration Command, and hosts Nigeria Police looking ready to ensure the Edo September 28th, 2016 governorship election is conducted in a peaceful and law abiding manner as they move through the streets of the city, the Edo State Capital. Operation Root Work is to show the public the level of fitness and enthusiasm of law enforcement agents who will be deployed for security duties during the governorship election in Edo State. Traffic stood still as bystanders can only marvel at the sight of these officers in the procession. The exercise is concluded as the team returns to base at the headquarters of the Edo Police Command. 
Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operations, Mr. Olatunji Ayodele, says the temple will be sustained till the commencement of the governorship polls. This exercise is called exercise root work. The exercise is to show the public that our fitness, physical, uh, physical fitness, mental alertness for this election that is coming up is so that we are ready for this election. You can see our armor personnel carriers has arrived, so we, we are battle ready for this election. This is to send warning signals to any hoodlums, any miscreant, any electoral violators that a do state is not a place for them. Between now, when I say the exercise continues, we are still going on show of first on Monday. Security agencies again issuing a strong statement of the willingness to provide a conducive environment for a peaceful and conclusive 2016 Edo governorship election come September 28, 2016 in Edo State. Stop paying us half salaries. Now that's the cry coming from resident doctors at the Ladoke Akintola University of Technology Teaching Hospital of Womosho in Oyo State, as they decry the attitude of the state government to them and the hospital. To drive home their point, the doctors have staged a protest against what they describe as neglect of responsibility. Resident doctors of the Ladoke Akintola University of Technology Teaching Hospital of Bumosho on a protest walk. This is an exercise they have tagged a walk to save a million lives to call government's attention to the proper funding of the hospital. The hospital has had to grapple with sustainers with respect to starving of funds. Funds are not given to the hospital. Equipment are not supplied. Even the ones that are ordered for and supplied have not been installed. Infrastructures are there that have not been completed. The doctors also say no to half salary that they say has persisted for a few months. We are saying no to half salary. We are saying no to commercialization of health. Because the implication of this decision of the state government would mean that that pregnant woman, that infant, that neonate, that child under five, that elderly man, our fathers, our mothers that look up to Lauter Teaching Hospital to get affordable health would no longer be able to financially assess it. One of the patients in the hospital lends a voice to the protest, asking governments to attend to the hospital's needs to avoid unnecessary loss of lives. If, they did, if the government didn't do something about it, a lot, a lot of patients would die because it's not, up, it's not everybody that has opportunity to go to private hospital. The medical practitioners at the five-year-old institution also take their grievance to the traditional ruler of the town. I listen to what you have said. And by the grace of God, it's not me, it's God. As the protest winds down, residents of the state say they are hoping that the Oyo State Government will rise to the occasion and ensure that the doctors, as well as the medical facilities, receive utmost attention. Now, reversing Nigeria's current economic difficulties may be a daunting task, but the Christian Association of Nigeria can is asking the federal government not to be discouraged in its efforts to bring the nation out of recession. Speaking in Abuja, the president of Khan, Reverend Samson Ayokunle, explained that the present situation should propel the government to take tough decisions. He also asked Nigerians to be hopeful and change their attitude to work. I will encourage all Nigerians to be hopeful. It is not, uh, the solution is not saying I, I, I commit suicide or go into depression or be venting anger on the people around you. They, they are not the cause of your problem. And the economic gloom is not in Nigeria alone, it's in Brazil, it's in other lands of the world. But we want to kick it out of Nigeria. With concerted effort, uh, we will all get there. Let us change our attitude to work as well. 
People just want to work and while away time, not to really do the work. You cannot earn salary when you are not adding value. You have to add value. So our theology of work must change. Karuna State's internally generated revenue is about to get a boost as the state government has flagged off the construction of a multi-billion naira potatoes farm and processing facility. On a groundbreaking ceremony for the proposed factory, Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai says this is part of a plan to promote agriculture that would earn foreign exchange for the country. Manchok, an agrarian community in Kaura local government area of Kaduna State, is popularly known for cultivation of potato in large quantities and other farm products. No welcome, no welcome, no welcome, no welcome, this is why the state government is citing a potato plant in the area and women of the community cannot hide their joy. The potato processing factory is expected to be the largest in sub-Saharan Africa when completed in the next 18 months. To successfully run the plant, the factory will need about 10,000 hectares of land for potato cultivation. Upon completion, it will have the capacity of processing 2,500 tons of potatoes daily and create more than 30,000 jobs. Developing the agricultural sector will no doubt bring huge investments which will translate in improving the lives of our people, particularly those living in the host communities, and at the same time give us the economic benefits like increased internally generated revenue, job creation, and inclusive growth. Governor El Rufai, who performs the groundbreaking ceremony, believes that the return of vibrant economic activities and the reduction of poverty among the populace will drive prosperity and reduce the divisions that became pronounced as the state's economy entered dire straits from the late 1980s. We need investments across our state to create wealth and jobs and to conclusively defeat the poverty that has blighted too many lives and inclined many to succumb to machinations of division, hate, and mischief. We all know that investments will not come in an atmosphere of insecurity. No investor would want to put his money in an insecure environment. That is why I'm very grateful to Sarkim Marwa and the people of Manchok and Kaura local government for maintaining a safe and secure environment that has enabled the Kampro to come here. The issue of access to financing remains a major challenge that most investors are being confronted with. This, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Godwin Emifiele, assures is being addressed to ensure that investors with viable ideas are given the necessary support. Efforts made by the state governments and private sector players towards driving economic growth, reducing unemployment and increasing investments are not only commendable, but also helps support the CBN's mandate of promoting stable macroeconomic growth in the country. I am particularly delighted that the Kaduna State Government, through the Investment Promotion Agency, is taking adequate measures to make Kaduna a viable destination for local and foreign investment, among others in Nigeria. On completion, the plants will produce French fries, Irish flakes and biscuits for local and international consumption. So ahead on the news at 10, Minister of Budget and Planning defends planned sale of country's assets by the federal government. That's on business news. Join us again.